So good morning, good morning, good morning. Come, come, come. Welcome. Can I ask whoever's closest to the door to close it? Would you mind closing? Yes. Thank you, Rob. I know people are still coming in. The only reason I ask, I'm not locking you in as a fire hazard. I just have squirrel moments. So if something's happening outside, my eye is going to go there. So I need, I need to lock you in. So who knows or cares? Well, of course you care, otherwise you wouldn't be here. But who thinks that we're going to like burn some incense and have some trust falls in here today? <laughs> Who's afraid of that? Honestly, everybody afraid that I'm going to make you meditate? Yeah, a little bit, right? <laughs> That's OK. That's OK. That's OK. It's like, all right, I'm going to hand out your blindfolds and everybody like trust each other and fall back. I'm not going to do that, OK? I promise. I'm not going to do that. Some people might think, oh, this is going to be some touchy-feely shit. I don't know. <laughs> I promise you, it's nothing like that, OK? This is going to be a very intellectual discussion that aligns your body with what's happening in your mind, OK? So we're going to take good notes. We're going to have some fun. I only have you for 90 minutes. Tracy knows I've, been, I've done this with her and her group, but it takes a while. So we're just going to kind of scratch the surface, but I think we're going to have a lot of fun, OK? So my name is Carla Ogunrinde. Um, <clears throat> I am a dear friend and partner of High Tech, um, and Omar and Susanna and, and Viviana and all the wonderful people here. I am the chair, the current chair of IT Senior Management Forum. You guys met Viola yesterday. Um, so anytime they call and they say, would you, I say yes. Uh, my background, this is the, the quick little two second, who the hell is she moment. Um, my background, 24 years in IT, um, in Johnson & Johnson and MetLife, Vice President of Operations and Technology. I retired in 2012, so I get to do this full time, okay? So I have done all of those wonderful things that get you the private, you know, the reserved parking spot at Johnson & Johnson and all those really cool things that says, yes, look at me, I am hot shit, right? Because we work hard for that. We work really, really hard for that so that your mother can say, oh, I'm so proud of her. Work really hard for that. But none of that is who I am. Really none of it. None of it is who, it's not who any of us are. We're not, it, that's not going to be on our tombstones, right? She was vice president of technology and operations. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if our tombstone said that? The company that we worked for in the title? Wouldn't that be kind of weird? I mean, actually think about walking through a cemetery. Oh, they were a senior director, this one. Wow. <laughs> that's pretty. And who is it? Oh, just reception. Well, no, it's not. It's loving mother, devoted dad, right? That's what it says. So this is who I am. OK, so titles aside, I'm now an executive coach. I'm a chair of all of that wonderful stuff. But this is who I am. Because this is what I love. This is who I love. So those two amazing people at the top there, those are my daughters. That's Billy on the left and Taylor on the right. She's 32, she's 29. They are my favorite people in the entire world. My absolute favorite, favorite people in the entire world. Don't tell my husband. <laughs> that yummy piece of something on that side, that's my husband. <laughs> and yes, he is yummy. Uh, <laughs> I don't mind shit. I don't mind saying that. Um, the food that you see over there, I put that there because um, the f my food is really important to me. What you, what you see there, that's just tofu scramble and potatoes. So anybody who says, no, thank you to tofu, come to my house. I will change your mind, I promise. Okay. So that's why I put that up there, because I love it. Chaucer, Shakespeare, Milton, I'm an English major. My degree, my master's is in English Lit. I have never coded in my whole life, but I've always led IT teams. I didn't know it at the time, but I was coaching. I didn't know it at the time. I was telling their story. I didn't know it at the time. So I can talk to you forever about Shakespeare. I recite sonnets when I can't go to sleep. 
so really weird, but I, that's who I am, right? We, all, we can all create a slide like this. Like, who are you? Who are you really? Broadway tickets, I can go see a show every day of the week and not get bored. Watching someone on stage doing the thing that they love and that they're here to do, I just feel so grateful. So I can do that all day. And then yes, I have an addiction to Starbucks and my amazing Uber driver took me to Starbucks before coming here because I had to have my Starbucks so we have all of our vices and addictions, yes. And Vincent Van Gogh is up there just because I have an affinity to tortured souls that are misunderstood. This is who I love. This is what I love. So this is me, okay? When we talk about energy and we talk about energy leadership, we throw around the word authentic a lot. When you say authentic, it doesn't just mean com comfortable in front of a room. It doesn't just mean being able to inspire a team. It means who do you love, what do you love? Make sure you know it. Make sure that this is part of your day every day. Not just in passing, not just on autopilot, but that this is part of your day every day to remind you. So we have one rule today, only be here. For this quick 90 minutes, it's gonna be the fastest 90 minutes, only be here while, we, while you're here, okay? Don't be at the airport. So if anyone needs to check in, do it within the next 10 seconds. I just did it, because otherwise I would be thinking, how much time am I gonna to need to get to the airport? I did all that. Just be here right now for the 90 minutes. Okay, that's the only rule. So we're gonna talk about energy levels. And Julio um, asked me up front, um, he was in the room when I came in, and he said, I guess he was asking me to see, should he change what he signed up for? He, so he was very nice about it. So he goes, so energy leadership, what is this? And I explained to him what it was in, I don't know, two minutes or less, and he stayed. So thank you. Maybe not. No, you may not. <laughs> the doors are locked. He's, You're, he's very authentic, right? He's not going anywhere. The doors are locked. So. The very short answer about energy and energy leadership and the seven levels of energy and everything else, because we're going to go through all seven. The really short answer is we are constantly going through a process in our bodies every day throughout the day. And typically, we're only using what's above our neck. We're only using our head. We're only using our intellect because we're so smart and our egos are so sophisticated. So we're always only using what's above our neck. There's a whole system here. There's an entire system. And I'm not talking about emotions. I'm not talking about go cry. I'm not although, yes, go get a good cry. But I'm not saying that. I'm saying that our bodies are engaged with this thing that, that we call a system. Our bodies are engaged, but we're not aware of it. So understanding energy is going to align what's going on here with what's going on here every minute. Because what happens at the end of the day or at the end of the week when we're not aware? We're exhausted. We're really tired and we don't know how much we got done. But we're really tired. We're frustrated because Bob is asking us to go to this second meeting for the fifth time to talk about the same thing that we did before and we're exhausted. We're waiting for our weekend. How many people get exhausted by Sunday afternoon because you're already dreading Monday, right? What is it called, the Sunday blues, right? We're going we're gonna to take care of that when we align this, okay? That's all we're doing. Would that be helpful, right? Wouldn't that be like magic? You guys are here ready to learn some really deep magic, okay? So it's not just words, okay? This is really what we're gonna go through. This is the only model that you will see today, this morning. This is it. Yeah, take your pictures if you like. Because this is it. This is it. Because we want models so that we can understand, right? We want models so that we can get it right. The reality is we're all unique. So how this plays out is gonna be specific to who you are. So this is the only model that you're gonna to get to satisfy your, the, the need, our need, to know and get it right, okay? This is what we're talking about, seven different levels of energy, okay? The first two levels of energy is surviving. We spend most of our time there in surviving because surviving is all about me. Am I okay? Is my lipstick on? 
did he just say the same thing that I just said and he just took credit for it? Um, did, am I gonna get that promotion? Oh shit, I was supposed to get that promotion and what, so now I'm gonna have to leave. We're always here in level one and two as a society in survival. And the reason is because there are limited resources. There are only so few boxes at the top of that org chart. There are only but so much you know, bonus and money that you can get in terms of compensation. There are only so many cars and, and three or four car garages that you can have to compete with your, there's only so much. So we have limited resources, right? Very competitive in our industries, in our lives, very competitive. So we spend a lot of time in those, level, those uh, surviving levels one and two. The focus is on me, as it would be. It wouldn't be on anyone else but me in levels one and two. It makes sense that it would be. When we're here, the business impact to this is that it's short-term perspectives. Very tactical. We need this. So please don't walk out of here and say, oh my gosh, I can't be there because that's bad, and this is where I'm shooting for because that's good. Absolutely not. There are going to be times, many, many times, when you want to be at levels one and two because it is tactical. It is right now. We need to get this done because by tomorrow we don't have jobs. I was just, la this, I keep saying last week, earlier this week in Chicago with women in nuclear energy. Their jobs really are life and death. I don't know if anybody's checking out Chernobyl on HBO. It's life or death. When they have a conference, they stand up and they say, well, welcome everyone in terms of, um, you know, safety first, always the exits are here and here. It's serious for them. So they spend a lot of time in that survival space, right? Tactical, short term. In the adapting space, levels three, four, and five, that's where we start getting into, okay, me plus you. Me in this space with other people. Now, who am I in context of everybody else? This is where we want to spend most of our time when we're conscious of it. Because this is where collaboration happens. This is where brainstorming happens. This is where sharing the space with someone else happens. All of that happens in adapting. Okay? So when we're actually in a meeting and we're supposed to be sharing the space, but we're at level one and two, we know what that feels like, right? We're only in our seats. And we'll pull up to the table only in our seats. We're sharing the space, but I'm only in my seat. I only care about what I want to get out of the meeting and convincing you that I'm right. Six and seven is thriving. Six and seven is where we talk about vision. Six and seven is where we talk about, I have no idea how we're going to get there, but I know that we will. Six and seven is where we talk about the why. Simon Sinek, golden circle, that why, start with why, that's six and seven. So when we try to do vision setting, but we're really sitting at one and two, it's really, really hard and frustrating, okay? That's the only model you're gonna get. Now we're gonna go through the levels, okay? So, this is not just words and science, there's actually a process that goes, to, that goes through this, right? So, for those who absolutely need the intellect part, who's not gonna just go out on faith because you believe me and I'm wearing a pretty dress, there's actual science to this. It has nothing to do with coaching or anything else or concepts. It has actual science. When we are in threat or danger, there's a process that gets, gets kicked off called catabolic. Anybody know the terms catabolic and anabolic energies? I know you do. Put your hand down. She's a coach also. Catabolic and anabolic are processes that get kicked off in our bodies all day long. Weightlifters, people who are building body mass, people who are toning, yoga instructors, they know about catabolic and anabolic. This is what's happening. In a catabolic reaction, complex cells are being broken down into simple cells. That's what's happening, so that we can run really fast, do really, really hard things. Think, fight, flight, freeze. We're used to that, right? Fight or flight. What's happening in our bodies are complex cells are being broken down into simple cells so we can do really, really hard things. When I'm being chased by a saber-toothed tiger, that comes in really handy, doesn't it? I need to get the hell out of the way, don't I? I can't sit and say, well, maybe he's going to catch me. Maybe he, well, they don't really exist anymore, so maybe. I'm running. <laughs> I'm just running. You can, you can wonder and ponder all you want. You can be intellectual. You can be enlightened all you want. I'm getting the hell out of there, okay? 
That's dangerous. If a car is barreling down the road towards me, I'm not going to wonder, or is the car, how fast is it going? You know what? I have the right of way, so no. You're going to get the hell out of the street, right? When a catabolic process is being kicked off, adrenaline starts to fill your body so that it can do really hard things. You feel that adrenaline fresh when you're, when you're finally on the other side of the street and you're safe. It's like, oh my gosh, did you see that car? You can feel it. Athletes use this energy to win games. They suit up and they can play with injured body parts. That's not sheer will, that's their body saying, we got this. Because what's happening in our brains? What's happening in our brains is threat or danger. That's what's happening in our brains. It sends a signal to our body. Our body says, OK, we got this. We're going to take care of it. Here's the problem. I'm sitting in a meeting. Should we continue to pick on Bob? Let's keep picking on Bob. I'm sitting in a meeting, and Bob says, yeah, Carla, that's the, I, I, I don't know. That's not, that's not resonating with me. That's not passing the smell test. Oh, really? And I just worked on this all week with my team. It's not passing the smell. Threat or danger? Threat or danger to my ego? Threat or danger to my position? Threat or danger to this project? Threat or danger? My body doesn't know the difference that a car isn't barreling down the road. My brain kicks off that adrenaline rush. We don't feel it because it's not a flush of it. What happens, it's a slow drip of adrenaline. OK, let me go to the next meeting. Kathy, let's call her Becky. Is there any Beckys in the room? Oh, Becky, we love you, but I'm going to have to pick on you a little bit, a little bit, just a little bit. It just works. <laughs> Becky says, well, she's so, she's, look at that smile. But Becky says, yeah, but you know what? I don't know that that's really going to work because threat or danger. The thing I've been working on is not going to work. Slow adrenaline rush. We do this throughout the day of threat or danger to our ego, to our person, to our position. Now what happens by Thursday or Friday? My shoulders are up here. My body's tight. And all I'm thinking is, God, I got to get out of here. I can't wait for the weekend. I can't. I, maybe I'm going to get a massage. I just want to go out and just, do you want to go for a drink? You want to go to happy hour? Because I've been walking around like this for the whole week. <laughs> Because that slow faucet, I mean, that slow drip, that faucet's been on, adrenaline has been filling your body. You're not crazy. Has nothing to do with how many meetings you had on your calendar. Zero. It's because your brain has been sending signals to your body that says, there's threat here. And you haven't had anything to do to expel all that adrenaline. You're not running the field. You're not running out of it. You're not expending it in any way. So it's just been building up. Make sense? This is what's been happening all day, every day. This happens all day, every day. This happens all day, every day. Let me repeat it for the people in the back. This happens all day, every day. In this moment, as you sit in this chair, as you wonder, what the hell is she talking about? Adrenaline, threat or danger. Threat or danger to what you know today and what you're coming in and knowing new Adrenaline. It's a slow one, so you may not be super comfortable in your chair. You say, like, I don't know, let's see, I'm, I'm going to wait and see. Adrenaline. Nothing wrong with it, only when we're not aware that that's what's happening. That's when it becomes a problem. The second, the second one, exactly, right? <laughs> Instantly, right? It's like, oh, there's no danger here. One time, one time someone said, well, unless you're allergic to cats, I'm like, all right, you go too far. You go way too far. <laughs> Nobody needed that. Nobody needed that. OK, you're being way too literal. No danger. Do you see what you guys just did? You just laughed a little. You know what happened when you just did that? You just got a little bit of oxygen in your body. Literally just got a little bit of oxygen. We were out last night laughing because we have some funny friends. And we're laughing our heads off. And when you're laughing like that, it's like, oh my god, I needed that. It wasn't the joke. Yeah, the joke was funny. But what we needed, we're like, oh my god, I so needed that. You got oxygen in your body. The minute you get oxygen in your body, this stuff stops. That adrenaline rush stops. And you start to get here. 
Because what happens in an anabolic process, it's a building up of complex cells from simple cells. It's just the opposite. Look up catabolic and anabolic in your free time. Anabolic, a building up of complex cells from simple cells. In this space, I can pause. I can say, hmm, what just happened? Well, what was Becky thinking that she got so upset? I can actually pause and consider. In an anabolic process, I'm not judging, I'm discerning. I'm not reacting, I'm responding. Anabolic process starts at levels three, four, and five. Now I have choices, okay? Catabolic and anabolic, that's all that's happening all day long. All day long. All day long. Okay, so we ready to get to the levels? Because now it's like, oh shit, I had no idea that this is what was happening. I am so ready to be aware of this stuff, right? Because that's all we're going to do. We're not going to have you walking around with, you know, Cinderella birds tying ribbons in your hair and everyone getting along. Absolutely not. We have access to all seven levels. You're entitled to all seven levels. As a human being, this is your system. Be entitled to all of them, not only function in one and two. Okay? Level one. Level one energy, 100% catabolic. 100% catabolic. What's happening at level one is I am not in control. I am surprised by something that I wasn't expecting. My plans did not go according to the way that I set out. Level one. Happens all day long. Happens all day long in small ways, big ways. I walk into my boss's office and HR is sitting there with her. That's not good. Why are you here? <laughs> Do you want me to leave until she's gone? What's, what's happening here? Level one, right? Level one. Something just happened I was not aware of, I'm not in control over. I wasn't in that meeting that put me on that list. Someone, is, someone else is in charge and in control. I wasn't. I'm not. I get to Starbucks. Starbucks doesn't have soy milk. I wasn't in control of inventory. But I came here looking for my fix, and now I can't have it. In this moment, what am I going to do? At level one, not only am I not in control, but I don't know if I'm going to be OK. Level one can last a minute. It can last a month. It can last an entire term that you're in your company. It can last a lifetime when you have trauma. Wasn't in control. For all, stand up. Don't stand up yet. <laughs> stand up if you have ever been in a meeting and Becky threw you under the bus. <laughs> not this one, not this beautiful one. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, stand up, stand up if you've ever gotten a phone call because of something tragic that happened. Stand up if you've ever gotten into the airport, packed your bags, checked in on time, did everything you were supposed to do, and your flight was delayed. Okay? Yeah, look around. <laughs> Level one energy, right? It's exhausting. This is, look around. Have a seat. Thank you, guys. Level one energy. I'm not in control. This thing happened right now in this moment. I don't know what I'm going to do about it. I don't know if I'm going to be OK. I can't shut the record player off. I keep re replaying that conversation in my head. Well, what did he mean when he said that? Well, wait a minute. Well, what did she mean? Oh, man, I just finished that presentation. I probably should have said this. And I probably should have said that. Level one. It's all level one. It's overwhelming. It can be situational or it could be very chronic. My mother, bless her heart. She used to say, someone would say, oh, Ronnie, how are you doing? And she would say, well, no sense complaining. Bless her heart, right? She doesn't do that anymore. She has a coach for her daughter, so she doesn't do that anymore. <laughs> but that's what she would say, because chronically, she wasn't in charge. She worked at the bank for 40-something years, 
and she wasn't in charge. So she was always waiting for the shoe to drop to say, well, I don't know what's going to happen at the bank. Went through many, many mergers and everything else. When we're going through change management, how many people, how many people have ever gone through, you don't have to stand, how many people have ever gone through transformation in their organizations, right? Isn't that a cool name? Operational excellence. <laughs> yes, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> Operational excellence. Oh, shit, so we're going to cut some costs, and I might be on a list, right? So level one. So when we're trying to put up charts and graphs about the process of change, that's super handy. I'm not putting it down. I'm not criticizing it. But what's happening in the halls is this, the people. The people are saying, I have no idea what's going on. I don't know how this is going to turn out. Here we go again. This is what's happening in the halls. When you see that I don't care, it's because what's happening to the person, because I don't know, because I'm not in control, I'm not in charge, I'm going to reserve the little bit of energy that I use to get the hell out of bed and get in the shower and put clothes on. I'm going to reserve the energy that I have for me to go home. I have children. I have a family that I have to care about. I'm not going to put any more energy into this company. I, they don't know what they're doing. And while they do that, I'm just going to reserve my energy. That's what I'm just saying, nine to five, you get no more from me. Feels like they're robbing you of your energy. That's what's happening in the hallways. So when you're putting together slides to talk to your people about the change, put the slides away. Stand in the middle of the room and say, I know this is overwhelming. I'm scared too. I really don't know how it's all going to work out, but we're doing our best. You will reach more people more quickly because you're tapping into this. Think about the po political environment. Anybody, if anybody has any extra in their coffee that, <laughs> that, that's a lighter liquid, I'm not going to talk about politics, but very, very smart politicians have tapped into this, this feeling of overwhelm, this feeling of you're not in control, but do you want to be back in control? It's a very powerful energy, very powerful. Here's the problem. It's exhausting. When it's chronic, you cannot get out of bed. You start to feel ill. You start to become ill. You start to take sick leave because your body is saying, you know what, we're not, we're not getting up today. Put your bathrobe on. Put on the TV. It's too much. It's level one. OK? We feel it all the time. So when I've been here too long, what starts to happen? I get mad as hell. <laughs> I get mad as hell. Like, you know what? You know what? I'm not going to, I, I was about to say I'm not going to curse. I already did that. But I won't go further. But what I'm saying is F this. I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not going to be with my head, above, you know, my, my head underwater. I'm not doing it. Level two starts to kick in. Level two energy says, I win, you lose. If level one, if we're gonna, we'll use a winning and losing scenario just to make things easy. Level, level one says, I lose. In that moment, that's how I feel. I lose. I lose. I lose. I lose. Level two says, no. I win. You lose. That's when we start collecting all of our evidence that we're right. We're going to take that hill. We're going to fight that good fight. Right? He has arrows in his chest. It doesn't matter. I'm going to fight. I'm going to get this done. You need this to get out of level one. You need it. Here's the problem with level one. Well, level two energy, athletes on the field, right? Level two energy is winning, losing, black and white, up or down. I only have two choices. How many of us have pulled out the yellow legal pad? Well, back then when we used paper and said two columns, pros and cons, right? Pros and cons. I'm going to stay at this shit job or I'm going to leave, right? I hate my boss. I'm going to stay with this shit guy or I'm, no, I'm teasing, right? <laughs> But two columns, right? Pros and cons. Pros and cons. It's level two. It's better than one, though, isn't it? It's a lot better than one, because at least I have two choices. I don't have to stay for this. Here's the problem with level two. Level two is fantastic and necessary, because like I said, athletes use level two energy to win games. Because why? There's a win and there's a loss. We came to win. We're going to suit up. 
in our everyday, unless we're athletes on the field, because athletes, when they put their uniforms in their locker, they're not walking around saying win-lose, because they have husbands and wives to go home to. So they can't be in win-lose. When we lead from here, and everything is a win-lose, remember what's happening in our bodies. This is catabolic, burnout. If everything is win-lose, burnout, exhaustion, right? So level two energy says, here's my yellow pad, here's my pros, my cons, I have two choices. I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna win, I'm gonna lose. The fun and the problem with level two is that it requires energy and fuel to stay alive. The energy and fuel is anger, urgency. So this is when we have to collect it. So I'm gonna say, Akisi, you know how I can't stand Deshaun. Does she do the same thing to you? All the time, right? All the time. I said, I told her that I was going to pick her up at 8 o'clock, and she, she was late for you last week, right? Like, all the time. I don't know. Are you going to call her later? Is she coming? I don't really think she's coming. I'm not even doing it. Ileana, she did the same thing to you, right? I don't know what her problem is. Meanwhile, these are my girls. Always late. Always late. Yeah, don't be in the front rows, right? <laughs> it's a, 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 a comedy show. But this is what it sounds like, right? At the proverbial water cooler. You know how John always is. I can't say, here we go with the stupid meeting again. I cannot believe we're going to have to do this. We do it because it requires fuel. Level two requires fuel because adrenaline is pumping through our bodies. We have to use it. We can't just sit with all that energy. We have to use it. So I need company. That's what misery loves company. It's not even so much misery. It's just that I have to prove, I have to collect evidence of my rightness. Because level two is only right or wrong, good or bad, up or down. So I have to prove my rightness. I have to collect all the evidence that I'm right and the other person is wrong. Forget ego for a second. Forget that. Because ego just will get you to a place of, maybe I shouldn't do that. Forget that. We're not going to shit on ourselves, OK? That's not the point. But the point is simply know that it requires evidence. I'm driving in a car, and the car cuts me off. I'm going to say, this asshole, why can't learn how to drive? I had the right of way. Akisi's in the, in the passage. She said, Did you see how he just cut me off? I have the right. I'm going to talk about it now. It happened. It took two, 10 seconds. But I, have, I was right, and that person was wrong. Did you see that? This is what we're doing in meetings. When we're defending our presentation, and Becky is just shitting all over it. OK? I'm sorry, Becky. I love you. But damn, OK? And we just worked so hard on this, and she has something to say about it. Instead of being curious about what she has to say, I'm going to defend it. It's level two. I'm going to defend it because I worked hard on this. My team worked really hard on this. So I'm going to defend it. Am I listening to her? Absolutely. I, can't, I cannot because I'm at two. It's not my fault. I'm at two. She represented danger, a threat. I had to go to two. If I didn't go to two, I'd be at one. And what does one look like? Lose. Please let this room open up and let the earth swallow me because I just want to get the hell out of this meeting. I'm so exhausted. I can't. You know what, Becky? You're right. You're right. It's fine. I don't care. Whatever. It is what it is. We'll go back. We'll, we'll do it again. We've done that too, right? Because we're just so tired. It's like whatever. But when I've had my Wheaties, you know what, Becky? I hear. And then we try to be real sophisticated, right? Because we're grown ups, right? And we're classy. We're classy. I hear what you're saying. <laughs> Do I? I hear what you. I hear what you're saying. Or, or how about this? Well, when we're trying to really be respectfully. I respect your opinion, but no, I don't. No, I really don't. I really don't. And no, I did not hear what you said, because I was defending what I produced because I spent time on it. And I believe this was my last, best, brilliant idea. 
and you're about to threaten it. Of course I'm going to be at level two. Of course I am. Don't be surprised that you are. Don't challenge yourself because you are. Just know that you're there and take everything that comes with it, the exhaustion and everything else. So when would be a good time to be at level two at work? Anybody? This is interactive. A crisis? Absolutely. Why a crisis? I'm going to take action, right? I have to. If we don't, this thing crashes, it's going to cost us a million dollars every hour. Level two. Have to, right? We have a deadline. This thing has to be launched and live by Sunday night. John, you please go have a seat, because I'm not sure what's going on with you, but please go have a seat. And I need Janice to please come and get this done. Take it into athletic world. If a pitcher, I'm not a basketball, I'm a baseball player. Look, I already said basketball. I'm not a baseball player. But if a pitcher's arm is getting weak, you're going to go to the, the coach is going to go to the mound and say, please go take a seat and I'm going to put you in. That's level two. Athletic coaches live in this world, right? Go sit down. Here is the challenge when we're leading from here and we're always telling someone to go sit down, what starts to happen? burnout. I'm not valued. I'm not seen. I'm not cared for. Level two, command and control. Command and control will only lead to burnout if that's the only gear that you have. Because what you're doing to yourself and to your people is pouring adrenaline into them. Think of presentation. You're preparing for a presentation. Let's think about it this way. I have to keep checking. Oh, man. You did, and I didn't see you. I said, please let me know when I, I didn't see you, because I could do this all day. You have a presentation coming up three months from now. The minute you think of it, you start getting nervous in your body. Yeah? Why? What's happening? This, right? Your body isn't physically there yet, but your brain said, oh, you might mess this totally up. Your boss is going to be there. Oh my God, what the hell is going to happen now, right? Your body is still sitting in your house, not in front of an audience, but your body is saying, oh, where are we going? We have something to do? How about when a, pre a presenter's on upstage and they start getting dry mouth? Because adrenaline is filling their bodies. It's not because, oh, they're just not, they're not comfortable in front of us. No, adrenaline is filling their bodies and they have no place to <coughs> expend it. They're just standing there. This is when they start to shake because adrenaline is pouring through your bodies. But when you're standing up and you're presenting, you can't present from level two. That would make sense, right? Now that you know energy, you can't present from level two. Because what am I going to do with that adrenaline? I can't just keep running across the stage. I mean, I can, but that's not cool, right? Because now you have to follow me and I have heels on. It's going to get exhausting. I can't do that. So I can't present from level two. So I'll prepare, I'll say, I want to do a really good job with this, I know what I'm going to do. And now I'm here, and because I know energy, where do I want to be? What level do I want to present from? Okay, certainly not two, because the minute I start to present and someone in the back says, yeah, why well, don't buy this shit? I'm going to say, um, well, uh, yes, well, I, I hear what you're saying, um, but no. They, they, you feel like they're a heckler if I'm presenting from two. Because they're about to tell you that all your facts and figures are wrong if I'm at level two. They can't have that. So I'm gonna have to present from a very different energy level, okay? Where it's a share, as opposed to I'm telling you that I'm right and I'm smart and here it is. Will never go well. That's where the nerves comes from. Can't present from two, okay? Here's what's happening at level two. How long do I have you? That's not fair, only 10, 15, that's not fair. Okay, here's what's happening. I really wanna get levels one, two, and three in really, really, really solidly. Here's what's happening at these energy levels. Level one and level two, survival. Inner blocks is what's happening. There are four. We have a quick acronym for them. It's called a VAIL, V-A-I-L, it's called a VAIL. 
And if you write it vertically, and I didn't tell you ahead of time, so I apologize, note takers. Write it vertically. The L stands for limiting beliefs. Limiting beliefs, real simple. Broad generalizations. Things I picked up along the way. Okay? Men are incapable of having deep conversations. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's a broad generalization. Women are overly emotional. I'm not saying that. Broad generalization. Women aren't good at math and science. Broad generalization. Broad generalizations. They only get in the way if it's stopping you from doing something you want. If I want to have a deep conversation with someone, if I want to have a deep conversation, what's your name, sir? Sal. Sal. If I want to have a deep conversation with Sal, and I believe that men aren't capable, I'm going to keep it superficial. But meanwhile, he's my boss, and he's supposed to be helping me with my career. He's responsible for a lot of my stuff, but he's really not capable. And have I already set the stage? All right, well, let me tell him. My mentor told me I need to really be close to you, Sal. So anyway, this is what I'd like to do, but I'm ready to think. You're not capable of hearing what I'm saying. Bless your heart. <laughs> he can't help it, right? The only way to get through a limiting belief, really easy, find an exception to that rule. You know what? My Uncle Al, I could tell him anything. So that's, pro that's, not, that's, not, that's not true. That's not totally true. Maybe I can have a conversation with you. Really easy to get through a limiting belief. The next one up, interpretations. That I stands for interpretations. Interpretations are the most fun thing in the entire world. Because interpretations are simply the meaning that you give to a thing that happened in the moment. That's all it is. Something happened. I see Sal down the hall. I said hi. He got on the elevator. Didn't say hi back. That's what happened. I have to give meaning to all of that. Is he mad at me from that last call that we had? Oh, shit, because we have a, we have a meeting a little bit later, one-on-one -on -one later. Oh, he probably wants to give me feedback from that presentation, and he doesn't want. All that happened is that I said hi, and he got on the elevator. That's what happened. When we're the authors, we can make up any story that we want, since we're making up stories. We can make up any story we want. You know what happened to Sal? He had to run to the bathroom. <laughs> he didn't, he wasn't even paying attention. He had to, you know, in the morning, and yeah, he usually does in the morning. Like, <laughs> that's what that was. That's all that was. That's all that was. Okay, you know what, all right. Because otherwise, when I go in for that one-on-one, -on -one, I'm already thinking, oh my gosh, he didn't say hi to me, so he probably has something really bad that he wants to say. I have no idea why he got in the elevator and didn't say hi. I have no idea. It could be because he's upset, or it could be that he has to go to the bathroom, or it could be 10 other things. Interpretations are a lot of fun. I am from Spanish Harlem, born and raised, 110th Street, Lexington Avenue in New York. My husband and I traveled quite a bit, and it was years ago. I got to a point where I could go to the airport lounges. How many people remember that moment? Come on now, please. Am I not with my brothers and sisters here? That was a big deal. Come on now. I can go to the airport lounge, OK? And my husband's like, that's just so pretentious. I don't want to go to the lounge. It's like, I'll meet you at the gate. I'll be back. I'm going to the lounge. You can do whatever you want to do. I'm going to the lounge. OK. He says, fine. He comes with me. We dress in jeans and chucks and t-shirt when we travel. We don't dress up. We're not. We're coming downstairs from the lounge back to the gate. If you know, when it's on a second floor, it's a small elevator usually. And it takes, what, 10 seconds to get downstairs? Because you don't want to do the escalator? No big deal. Here are my husband and I. We're coming downstairs back to the gate. Little elevator. It's full of bags, my husband and I. There's someone to my right, shoulder to shoulder. There's a TSA agent at the panel the elevator panel, there's someone, my husband's to my left, and there's someone to his left. Really tight, tight fit, a lot of bags. And we're coming downstairs, so it takes, what, 10 seconds, right? The woman who's standing to my husband's left is staring at me hard without trying to be discreet. <laughs> and I'm standing here kicking her 
ass in my head. Because <laughs> all I'm thinking, you don't know what's in my wallet? Capital one, any capital ones? No. <laughs> but you don't know what's in my wallet. I can be in the, in the lounge, because she was dressed nicely. I can be in the lounge. You don't know me. I hate people who act like this is theirs and they're privileged. I, you don't know me. I can be here if I want. I'm from Spanish Harlem, but you don't know what I have in my wallet. Attitude, attitude, attitude. Elevator door is open. The woman steps out, still looking behind her. I'm like, bitch, I what you know. <laughs> we're going to do this? This is a thing now? I don't even know you. Why are you turning around? I'm so ready. to. It's like, I don't know what happened here, but something happened. So I guess we're going to do <laughs> OK. She gets off. She's turning around. She's looking. I'm like, you know what? The TSA agent gets off next. The person to my right gets off. My husband get out, is getting, and he's getting bags and things. He's, and I'm still so fighting mad. And he's like, babe, did you see? I said, I know. Right, level two. I named that company. I said, I know. Did, what was her problem? He goes, all right, baby, I don't know what you're talking about. And I said, that woman just staring at me. He goes, baby. <laughs> Crazy. I heard it. You were standing next to Emily Blunt. The actress, Emily Blunt, Devil Wears Prada. <laughs> Shoulder to shoulder, <laughs> Emily Blunt. Now when I see her in the movies, I'm like, oh, that's my girl. <laughs> that's my girl. Meanwhile, I, I never took the time to say, hey, I so respect your work. Never took the time, because what was I busy doing? <laughs> Kicking her ass. <laughs> she wasn't looking at me. She was looking at the person next to me. <laughs> Sometimes it's not about you. <laughs> So the story in our house sometimes is, you know what? You might be standing next to a celebrity. You might want to think about that one more time. <laughs> Not about you. But the story I told myself, the interpretation, was that she was judging me because I really don't belong here. How often do we do that in meetings? You don't know me. I worked hard to be the first person to graduate from college. You don't know me. My family came here with nothing. You don't know. We do it all the time, right? Have fun with interpretations. Since we're making up the story, I could have said, you know what? She's just admiring my shirt. Let me turn around so she can see. <laughs> Let me help her. Let me help her out. Let me just do uh, this. Oh, no, this side? <laughs> because I'm making up the story. I don't know. Interpretations are a lot of fun. The A stands for assumptions. Assumptions are harder to get through. So in terms of getting through an interpretation, make up a story that makes you smile. Since you're making up the story anyway, why is he taking my, my good idea? Maybe, I don't know, John does this all the time, I think. But now I'm in assumptions. Let me get down to an interpretation. Maybe because he's had a really rough week and he just wants one little win. And my idea was brilliant. It was. Go ahead and have it. It's not my last one. <laughs> I have tons of them. Go ahead and have it. I can make up any story I want. Assumptions get a lot harder because assumptions are all of our past history. It's all of the experiences that we've lived. So it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. You're not guessing. We file those away. So we have filing cabinets of experiences as reference so that we don't do it again, so that we don't step in something to, again, so that we don't get hurt again. So it's a lot harder to get through an assumption. This is when we hear ourselves saying, always, he always, she never, here we go again, we're doing this again. Assumptions, a lot harder. The hard thing with assumptions is that you have to suspend the belief that it's going to happen again, the exact same way that it did the last time. So that 99% Certainty that you have, you have to suspend that. If it's something you want. If I really want to have a conversation with Sal, and 99% of the time, all the other times I haven't been able to, but I really want to be close to Sal because I like him as a person, and he's responsible for my career, I really want to, I have to lean into that 1% chance that it's going to be different. The minute I do that, I start behaving differently. Because my energy is going into that 1% chance, not the 99% chance when it didn't. Whatever you feed grows, right? So I have to feed the 1%. You know what? 
he likes, maybe I'll bring him coffee. Maybe we just make it a little bit more relaxed. Maybe he's nervous too when he speaks to me. I don't know. Assumptions are harder. Here's the last one, the hardest one of all. The V stands for voices, inner voices. Anybody have those? A little bit, a little bit. We're not going to call them inner critics. We're not going to call them gremlins. <laughs> because they're not separate from us. Those inner voices, think of them as your little girl, your little boy, who was scared and frightened and wrong, and who came to your defense, came to your rescue because no one else did. The little girl who felt rejected, the little girl who felt not enough, the little girl who cried for help and nobody heard. We have trauma in our lives. We've gotten through things, whether it's being bullied in school or abused the little boy who did all that he could to fight back and couldn't. The little boy who got beaten up. That little girl, that little boy, has been doing one job and one job only ever since they, they came into an awareness that they didn't have all that they needed, that it wasn't safe. The minute they were aware of that, they got on duty. I'm going to protect you. You will never feel this way again. I'm going to make sure. So when we are doing big things and we're not sure that we're going to be safe, that little girl, that little boy says, oh, no, 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 don't do that, don't do that. It's not a gremlin. It's not an inner critic. She's there, he's there to protect you. That's all, that's all they're doing. So it would be horrible of us to say, oh, go sit down. I need to get that, that thought out of my head. Go sit down. You're telling the one, the one part of you that's keeping you safe to shut up. So you're doing to her exactly what adults did, what the grown-ups did, and not listening to you. You're not listening to her. How tragic. Learn, we learn how to put that little girl in our laps and say, I got you. What are you afraid of? What are you scared of? I got you. This adult version. So when we're in this space of being terrified, that little girl, that inner voice, all level one. All level one. I don't know if I'm going to be OK. Of course you don't. You're scared. Think about those little ones, really young, sitting in your belly. Deep, deep, deep roots. We didn't come out at this age. We didn't come out of the womb at this age with our suits on and our pretty dresses. We did not. We came, and we were happy, and everything was great until it wasn't, until someone made us feel not worthy, until someone hurt us until someone rejected us. And now we had to get over all of that and then suit up, put all that away neatly and suit up and pull our chair up to the table and act like none of that comes along with us. Of course it does. When we know energy and we're conscious of energy, we can know when she's pulling out our skirt to say, I don't know about this, this is not OK. And we get to secure the babies, secure the babies. Because she grew up, babies sit here. The 9-year-old, the 13-year-old has sit here. This is the part that wants to kick that lady, that stranger's ass. And I don't know, she might be a very delightful lady. <laughs> but that 13-year-old said, you can't, you can't bully me. You can't tell me that I'm not enough. You can't tell me that I don't belong here. And if you do try to tell me, I'm going to kick your ass. That's the 13-year-old. That's not the grown woman. The grown woman would say, why are you going to try to hurt a stranger? You don't know her. The grown woman would say that. The 13-year-old is ready to take her earrings off because she's from Spanish Harlem. And you can't tell me that I shouldn't be here. So when we're scared, when we're feeling that in our bodies, secure the children first. Take a big breath and secure those babies and say, I know you're scared because I'm remembering something that happened when I wasn't safe. But am I OK right here? We're OK. I got us. We spend a lot of time in level one and two. 
Every single person on the planet is trying to negotiate their veils, trying to negotiate the limiting beliefs, the interpretations, the assumptions, the inner voices. Every person on the planet, your manager, your colleagues, your team members. So when you, when you talk about, oh, well, the soft skills, that is such bullshit, I can't even tell you. Before I die, I want to eradicate that term soft skills. I really do. Put that shit on my tombstone, OK? <laughs> she, she said soft skills is not a thing. Soft skills is not a thing. Technical skills, super, super important. Intellect, right? But the soft skill, it's everything we just talked about. That is hard. No one's going to come and sit in your office and say, you know what, this hurt me, and this is what something that I was really struggling with. This is something that I'm trying to over. No one's going to tell you that. No one's walking around with a sign, but that's what you're engaging with. When someone's defending themselves, when someone's like ready to, 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 that's what you're engaging with. Is that easy? Is that soft? That shit is hard. As leaders, this is what you're signing up for. This is what you're saying yes to. Not only yours, but everyone that you're responsible for. That's hard. Because we walk around and we don't know who we are when we are not aware of all that we're bringing along with us. The, f the fearful parts of us, the parts that want the fearful parts, the parts that want to fight, and why we're doing it. Very quick video. God, I wish I had you for like another hour. Anyway, because we could do exercises, but anyway. I know, right? <laughs> but this is why, this is why this stuff is hard. I'm going to tell you a quick little story. Well, my friends, my dear, dear friends know, I can't take compliments for shit, right? They just have, look at Deshaun, no, she can't. <laughs> Nobody's asking for testimonies, okay? <laughs> but, but I can't, right? I can't. Yeah. And someone might think, oh, she's so full of it. She's, she knows she's pretty. Guess what? I got bullied my whole childhood. I grew up in Spanish Harlem in the 60s and 70s. It was not cool then to be by anything, to be multicultural. I was not black enough for the black girls, and I was not Puerto Rican enough for the Puerto Rican girls. Bullied my whole life, my whole childhood. Cancel that. Bullied my whole childhood. In Central Park Pool one summer, the whole summer I'm begging my mother to, to buy me a swim cap, bathing cap, for those who don't know, bathing cap, so I can go to the pool. And she goes, you don't need one. It's like, please, please, because why? All my friends had bathing caps. Please, please, can I have a bathing cap? My mother was from a generation of, you don't negotiate, you're a child, you do what I tell you, right? <laughs> I don't know if anybody had the same mom. <laughs> so punchline, I did not get a bathing cap. We go to the pool, me and these girls, and we're having so much fun. We're having a great time. They have bathing caps, I don't. But we're having such a good time. And I go to the bathroom, they're in the locker room area. And I come back around the corner, and they're talking about me. And they're saying, oh, she thinks she's cute. She thinks she's cute because she has good hair. I can't stand her because she thinks she's cute. She thinks she's cute because, and all I'm thinking behind the lockers is, you don't know me. I'm really nice. You don't know me. So that little girl decided, and I had to spend the rest of the day with them, knowing what they really thought of me. So I decided at some point, you know what? I don't need you. I don't need you. So I'm going to reject you before you reject me. So what does that look like in business? It's really, really attractive in business, apparently. <laughs> when you don't want the company, I don't want your promotion. No, 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 we want you to stay. We want, it's very attractive. But really what I'm doing, I'm defending myself. I don't want to get real close to you and have you really like me and everything else because I don't even believe it. So I'm going to reject you before you reject me. I don't need any of this shit, right? 13-year-old, I don't need this. You had me for two years, that's it. Don't get close to me, you had me for two years. Oh, wow, well, we want to make her VP. We want to make her, because indifference is super attractive. But what was I doing? Protecting the little girl. We're always protecting that little boy, little girl, 
And when we know that there is more to us, yes, that was painful, yes, that hurt, that's not all of who you are. So my very first thing, if I'm feeling insecure, the first thought that happens is, yeah, but they don't, you don't know me, because who am I talk, who's speaking? The seven-year-old. We are more than what we believe we are. And people will tell us, oh, you're so pretty, you're so, I can't hear that, because I don't believe it. My, old, my youngest one, the 29-year-old, someone said to her, we were at Sephora, and someone said to her, you are just so beautiful. She goes, thank you so much, you're so sweet. Anyway, can I ask see that lip gloss? And I said, how do you do that? And she goes, she goes, what do you mean? And I said, you were just, like, oh, thank you so much. And she says, well, mom, she gave me a compliment. What else would I say? And it's like, that was like a superpower to me. <laughs> and she's like, I don't know what your problem is. That was easy. She has her own little girl issue for something that I have no idea. But for me, that was like, how did you do that? So, and then other people are saying, oh my God, you're just so pretty. And I'm like, uh, anyway, look at your hair. I love what you're saying. I'm going to turn it around because it comes along with you, right? So real quick, this is what is really happening. I love this video, not only for women, but for men. We are more beautiful than we think we are. When we don't believe that, we stay at levels one and two. Because we're fighting to be right. We're fighting to defend ourselves. We're fighting to make sure that you don't see all of the scary parts. If I'm not fighting, then who am I? If I'm not a director, then who am I? If I'm not smart in this meeting, then who am I? I'm wrong. I'm inefficient. I'm deficient. <coughs> well, we're out of survival. How's survival feel? Heavy, right? Guess what? You walk around with this all the time. 
We're just calling it out. This is catabolic. We're just calling it out. We're just breaking it down to say, you're not crazy. You're not crazy. What you're feeling in your body is because of this which is going on in our heads. We want this to be in alignment, OK? Done with survival. I need to be done with survival. <laughs> Here's the benefit of knowing when you're in that survival space. If I know I'm in a survival moment, if I'm defending and I'm doing all this, I can pause and say, okay, hang on, what's going on? You know what? I went right to level two. When I'm working with leadership teams, this is gold. Because now they're not interacting with personalities. They're talking about energy. Man, when you said that, Becky, I love you. When you said that, Becky, I went right to level two. It had nothing to do with Becky, it has to do with me. I went right to level two. And she can pause because she knows exactly what that meant, because she knows what level two feels like for her. And so she'll pause. <sighs> okay, so what was happening at level two? What are you defending? We're only talking energy, right? Knowing the language of energy, super helpful in teams or anything else. You know what? I had a really rough day. Sal, is it okay if we reschedule for tomorrow morning? Because I'm at level one. What kind of conversation will I be able to have with Sal if I'm at level one? I'm already defeated. I'm already overwhelmed. Why would I bring that into this meeting with him? Be aware, go take care, whatever that might be. Sit with that little girl, listen to what she has to say, and say, you know, is it okay if I just, because whatever we talk about, I won't be able to hear you. Can we reschedule for tomorrow morning? Would that be OK? Of course. When I'm at level two, I get to say, what is your name, Jessica? Jessica. I get to be able to say, man, I went right to level two. Instead of saying, I'm so sorry, because we behave badly at level two, on purpose, because we're fighting. It's not about your feelings. I don't give a damn about your feelings. We're fighting, right? So we know we behave badly at level two. When I know I'm at level two, I get to come back to Jessica. Forgive me. Forgive me. Not I'm sorry, not I shouldn't have, don't should, forgive me. I had to get that done. I had to get that out of the way. I was just, and we talk about driver and amiable and everything else. That's great, but those are styles. This is energy. Every style, I don't care what style you are. You could be styled pineapple, I don't care. Everyone is dealing with energy. So when I'm at level two, I get to say, forgive me, Jessica, please. Thank you. Instantly, now we're connected. We're not connected because we come from the same town. We're not connected because we grew up in the same generation. We're connected because we're just people. That's it. That's the, that is the biggest, ult, most ultimate, magical level of connection on a human level. Not, oh, well, yeah, but he's into sports and golf, and I don't play golf, so we don't really. Are you human? <laughs> You're breathing oxygen, right? These trees are doing something for you. You're human, right? Connect there. I was, I was definitely in warrior mode. Forgive me. Instantly, her weapons are now down because there's no fight. Connect on energy. When, we're, when we know this and we've done this, now we can move to level three. Okay? Level, oh, I'm so sorry. Just show up. It's the hardest part. This is me. I swear to God, if you say, take anything out, Carla wants to eradicate the term soft skills. Make it a thing, OK? We're here. We're done with survival. We're here now and adapting. Adapting what's happening and adapting. It's, this is where we're talking about mission. This is where we're talking about what else might be possible, because we're not only dealing with two choices. We try to do this really hard stuff about diverse perspectives, really? When we're at level two, one and two, how, how successful will we be? <laughs> I'm just curious. Do I really give a damn about your diverse perspective? Not really. I'm at level two. I hear what you're saying. You do not. You do not. Stop trying to say that you do. You don't. It's OK that you don't, but stop trying to say that you do. I can only hear you when I start moving into adapting. In order to get to adapting, I need to first make sure that I'm OK. So the winning, losing scenario, at level three, the scenario is I win. It's OK if you win, too. My win is not based on whether or not you lose. We'll all be traveling today, or you have traveled, and you're on a plane, and the instruction is put the oxygen mask on your face first. That's level three. You are no good to me unless you are OK. 
Level three is when we get to remember all of who we are. Level three is a bridge. If I'm standing, catabolic stuff is happening here. Levels one and level two, I can see it. I can see all the people around this table. Here we go again, all of those things right here. Anabolic is on this side. Maybe there's something I need to hear and I, I wasn't hearing before. Maybe there's some discernment, curiosity. I'm not in danger. Level three is a beautiful place to be. Level three is not, let me read my affirmation and I'm all set for the morning. How well does that work? You try so hard though, you try so hard. I had such a good morning. I, I, I listened to my, my, my meditation and I had my affirmation and then I walked in and Deshaun came in and screwed up my whole zen. I love her, I could tease her. Anybody have that? I come in early in the morning so that I can start my day. And then the one John comes in, messed up my whole morning. Because what's happening? We're trying to intellectually sheer will this shit. And you can't because it's hard, right? Level three, here's some tips at level three. Level three is all about being mindful. Create your playlist. Create your playlist, whether it's fast music, slow music. I have Yo-Yo Ma, I have Sammy Davis Jr., I have Marvin Sapp, I have Pavarotti on my playlist. It is playing every single morning as I get dressed for the day. Every day. Can you imagine if I had to do what I do and all I have is my intellect? I don't know shit. I don't. All I'm doing is sharing things that I want to, I want to offer. Take this, use it, talk to people about it. May, wouldn't it be wonderful if the whole world had an inkling when the whole world does? But I can't do it by myself. I can't do it by, I'm so smart and I'm expert. I want to be excellent at all of this. New definition of excellence. Excellence is not about perfection. Excellence is offering, giving all of you, all that you have in this right now moment, period. That's it. All of you, all that you have in this right now moment, that's all you can do. Everything that happens as a result of that is none of your business. It's none of your business. That's excellence. How am I gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna wake up. I'm gonna have all the things that are important to me. Why is Sammy Davis Jr. on my playlist? Because it reminds me of my dad. He was a look-alike for Sammy Davis Jr. He looked exact, people would stop him on the street. He looks like Sammy Davis Jr. He passed away. When I hear that song, I want my dad for a second. When I listen to Pavarotti, it's not because he's an amazing, amazing, amazing tenor. It's because at the end of this live performance, the applause goes on for like a minute. Ooh, it fills me up. Why do I have Yo-Yo Ma? Because there's a song called Gabriel's Oboe that makes me cry fills me up. Why Marvin Sapp? That's easy. Anybody know Marvin Sapp? Now I'm, in the, now I'm in the movement part, right, of my morning. You need to fill your body up. We t Everybody took a shower this morning? I don't want to shame you. I don't want to shame you. <laughs> none of my business. I it was just a demonstration, but none of my business. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't, maybe you woke up late. I don't know. <laughs> Most times, we've showered in a day, in the morning, right? We brushed our teeth, we showered. We're very aware of the physical, so we shower. We brush our teeth. When you've showered in the morning, if something spills on your hand, do you say, oh shit, there goes my shower. <laughs> that's it, that's it, that's my whole day now. We don't do that, right? Why? Why not? It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal, but why isn't it a big deal? Jessica? Because we're gonna shower tomorrow. Because we're gonna shower tomorrow. We're gonna shower tomorrow. We're gonna brush our teeth. If it's Julio, he brushes his teeth a couple times during the day. You're going to do it again. The only reason that this gets hard is because we only want to experience this or we believe we can only experience this when we go on vacation. When we're sitting at the water and it's blue and it's like, oh my God, this feels so good. But guess what? When we're, if we wait that long, now it's an escape. Because our life, now I have, to go to, I have to go back to my real life. No, every moment, this is your real life right now. Every moment is your real life. You don't get to put it on a shelf. 
Level three is all about being mindful, filling yourself up every single day, like a car with gas. Here's, here's the most important part. To be used. Shocking. I thought this shit, this good feeling was just for me. And then Becky over here, this bitch, comes in <laughs> and takes it. All my zen. All my zen. Because it was for me. <laughs> Poor Becky. <laughs> I, use, I fill up so I can use it. Here, here. Becky, what's going on with you? you George, is it George or Jorge? George. George, what's going on? You've seen the little, what's going on? I'm using it. It's not for me to hoard. When I'm hoarding it, what starts to happen? And now I'm getting into level two. Because I need to win, it's mine. Now I'm getting into level one because everyone has taken it. And now I'm overwhelmed. It's to be used. It'd be horrible to have a Ferrari full, full, of, ga full of gas and it's parked in the parking lot. You're not going anywhere. Level three, use it, okay? Use it. The only reason we hoard it is because we don't fill up every day. Fill up every day. Have, create a playlist if you don't have one. What are other ways? Um, level three, know, what you, know what's important to you. Know your values. We're not, we were doing a values exercise. Call me, we'll do it some other time, okay? Know what's important to you, know why. Values are not, loyalty is important to me, family is important to me, respect is important to me. Guess what, those are not words. Those came from someplace. Loyalty is important to you because your dad, you saw it in your dad. Your dad came home every day, supported our family. So it's not just loyalty is important to me and it's because I just thought of it. It comes from someplace very deep and very, very personal. Know what they are. Have someone that you're accountable to. A lot of leaders in the room, we stopped having mentors. And I'm not talking about mentors to, to learn more stuff. I mean, have someone that you're accountable to. As we get older, my mom calls me when she needs something. Not when she needs something, because she doesn't. She's like, oh, my, my, my roof, I might have to. And it's like, why didn't you tell me? Why? But I, I stopped going to my mom to feel nurtured, to sit at her knee. As we get older, and we're so smart, we stop doing that. Find an elder. Find an elder. Be accountable to someone that, that you want to make proud. Be accountable to somebody. When it's just us and what we're measuring is our, our, our next, our next um, promotion, our title, that's success, but it is not fulfillment. It's not, and you feel it. Be accountable to somebody. Find an elder that you want to just sit and kneel in front of them. I did this two weeks ago with the Yama Van Zandt. And I sat at her knee, I kneeled, I prostrated myself and I kneeled at her and I cried. Because I don't know shit. And I want you to be proud of me. When we don't have that and it's just us, then it's all intellect. Well, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that and oh, I got that. That's too much weight. That's just too much. Liberate yourself from that. That's level two nonstop. It's great to work really hard. It's great to succeed. It's great to win. It's great to have that parking spot. I'm not going to lie. It's great. It can't be everything. Cannot. Level three, remember who you are. Have that one slide that says, this is who I love and what I love. Level three, now I'm filling up and I'm doing it every day. Be purposeful. When we are, do you remember these people? You miss them, huh? Anyway, maybe you do, maybe you don't, I don't know. Oh, not this. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. This is because we were gonna do an exercise, we're not gonna do it, so. Feel badly, because I feel badly, so I want company. All right, when we are doing level three, here's the beauty. Everybody, put your, put your, sit in your seat, put your, put your feet down, uncross your legs. Okay, now I'm gonna hand out the blindfolds. <laughs> now that I got you, I'm gonna hand out the blind, no, I'm teasing. No, no, don't look at that. All right, you can, fine. <laughs> it's my fault, I put it up there. But again, think about what we're doing, right? Just be here, don't worry about that. You can call me for that, don't worry about that. But we, we're in our, we wanna make sure we get it, right? Don't worry about that. 
Just be in this room. Feet on the floor. Hands open, up to, up to receive, or down on your knees to be grounded. If you're feeling too like, ooh, put your hands down to be grounded, up to receive. Take a really nice full inhale. Hold it. Full, complete exhale. Do it again. One full inhale in your chest, in your chest. Hold it. Full, complete exhale. You can feel the vibration in your body. Feel the weight of your body in the chair. Feel your feet connected to the floor, through the pipes, through the metal, down to the earth. Relax your face, relax your forehead, relax that little piece between your forehead, between your eyes, relax your jaw. Open your eyes. This is level three. Did you need a yoga mat? Did you need clothes? This is level three. It's right here. It's like a little vacation. This is level three. Practice meditation, practice yoga, practice prayer, practice whatever you need to be here because here is when you start to shut off that catabolic process in your body. You interrupt it to say, okay, I don't know what's gonna happen, but right this second, in this moment, only this moment, I'm okay. I'm actually okay right now. You can do this in front of a room. You could do this in a conference call, on a conference call. You can do this in a meeting. Just so that you can turn off all of the adrenaline. It's level three. Find a practice. Do it every day. Know that you're going to use it in the day. Okay? This is what it could look like. your day like that. <laughs> Imagine starting your day like that. Not against anybody. I'm okay. Her mom did. This is called Jessica's daily routine. Have a daily routine, a preventative routine, and a corrective routine. Don't wait until you're in crisis and then say, oh my God, I don't know what's going on. I can't stand Sal, blah, blah, blah. No. Have a daily routine, a preventative routine, a corrective routine. Stop trying to do it by yourself. Stop trying to sheer will it to death. Imagine starting your day like that every day. Yes, yeah, something might happen on the playground, but guess what? She does this every day. So what happened on the playground, it's like, all right, well, maybe that's what, maybe he was just having a bad day. Okay, so maybe I'm gonna come over here and talk to Fung. <laughs> Level three will get you to break down all of those veils, will get you to that interpretation and coming up with a new story that serves you. Level three. Only level three. Level three is the most important thing in the world. When we're full, what happens? These are the people that I said maybe you miss. I don't know. I miss them. When we're at level three and we're full and we're giving it away and we're re refilling and we're giving it away and we're refilling, we're giving it away, we're refilling, I can now see someone. I can see George is not, something's going on with him. He hasn't said anything, but I, something's going on. And because of that, I can literally, remember that little kitten? I can come close to him, not avoid him. If I'm at level one or two and something's going on with him, what am I doing? I'm way over here. It's like, I don't know what's going on with George, but anyway. 
he's not here at the meeting. I, well, whatever. He had the meeting request, so. But I know something's going on. But if I'm at level one or two, do I have the capacity to even engage with him? I do not. So I'm not avoiding him because I'm a bad person. I'm avoiding him because I don't have any additional energy to give to you. That's why. So Jessica and I is just going to be over here, and he can do whatever he wants. And let me talk to, him, to, to you about him. Um, I know that he, last week, he also blew off your meeting. Mm -hmm. Right? He did. I know. I don't know what his problem is. He had the meeting request. That's on him. Does it all the time. Does it all the time. Level two, right? If I'm at level three and I'm doing Jessica and I'm listening to my music and I'm meditating, I'm doing whatever I need to fill up, at level four, I can say, where's George? You know what? Hang on. Hang on. Let me call him. Let me come get him. Let me come all the way over to him and come get him. Now I can come to him. And if he's at level one, I know he's not going to drain me. I actually get to sit next to him. I get to kneel with him and say, what's up? Because at level four, I'm in service. At level four, I can listen. So we talk about active listening and all this other bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> level four, level four is I'm listening to things that he can't even articulate yet. What's going on? I cannot do this from two. I cannot do this from one. I have to be at four. So when we try to have performance reviews and shit, and we're doing, stop, stop. You're just going to be exhausted. You have to be at four in order for me to actually hear what he's saying, not problem solve, but hear what he's saying because maybe just being here and giving you 15 minutes of un, no objective, no judgment, I'm just here. Because he can figure out whatever, whatever he's stuck with, he can figure it out. He just needs someone to witness that he's not okay right now. Level four. Take this home to your wives and your husbands. They will say, what kind of conference did you go to? <laughs> they will be amazed. You're not trying to solve something for me? You're just listening? Acknowledging? Not understanding? My husband once said, baby, I'm just trying to understand what you're saying. That's the problem. You're trying to understand. It's not about you. Just acknowledge that I'm upset. Just do that. When he's trying to understand, he's at two, because he's trying to solve my problems. Just, be, just, just acknowledge. Four. Level five, we're doing things together. OK? Me plus you. Level five, me plus you. This is where strategy happens. This is where brainstorming happens. When I'm working with teams and they say, OK, guys, we need to bring a lot of level five into this conversation. AWS, you saw yesterday, talking about their innovation or, um, um, organization and how they do things for innovation. And how you have, even in your own organizations, you'll have not the cubes, but the common areas. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get to five. It's all energy. They're just trying to get to five. They don't want you in your own space that you protect and defend. They want you out and about. That's level five. It's not magic. You guys are going to be masters at this because it's like, that's energy. What energy is that, Sal? Well, I think that's four. I think that's five. Speak energy. Those cubes, those, those common spaces, is so that we can create community. Improvisation, all level five. All level five. Take a picture of this one. Because I won't have time to, I have to close up. Ask yourselves, I am going to release you, because I have to, I'm told. Ask yourselves how much time you're spending in each. You need both. You will do both. You will manage and you will lead. You manage things. You manage timelines. You manage deadlines. You manage resources. You lead people, because in the leading is all of the messy stuff that we're unaware of. Ask yourself the percentage of time. Is it 80-20? If it's 80-20, let's talk. Right? Is it 50-50? Maybe. Is it 20? There is no formula. So don't look for one. Just ask yourself, how much time? Because if you're only here, if you're mostly here, you're going to have really tired people and you're going to be exhausted. OK? Level six, we're in thriving. And I'm finishing in the next 60 seconds. Level six 
It's when all we're doing, there is no winning and losing. We're winning all the time. We're winning all the time. For those note takers, level three is I win. It's okay if you win. It's not my focus on whether or not the other person wins or loses. Level four is you win. Not because I surrender, I give up, but you win because I'm, I can be here for you. You win. Level five is we all win or no one wins, which is different than win-win. Quick quiz. What is win-win energetically? Take a guess. What level? Three. Yes. Yes. Not everybody gets that. Look at you. Three. <laughs> because level three is I win. It's okay if you win too, so win-win. But think about it. How, how brave, how amazing was that for corporations to say, we're going to get to a win-win. When we spend so much of our time at two, that's a pretty cool thing. We want to get to five. We all win or no one wins, which means it's not just about me. I literally have to come close to Andres and say, what's important to you? So I have to listen, I have to bring my thing and also include his. Because I know together it's going to be better than I ever could have done on my own. Level five. A lot of really cool things happen at five. Level six, we win all the time. This is when instinct. You don't know how to be a dad. You have this little precious innocent. You have no idea. But somehow you know that you have all that you need to care for this baby. This is where queens get to be queens. <coughs> Women, we're not being men walking around in heels, which we do. We get to be, our feminine energy is powerful. It's everything here. Only we can bring it to the conversation. It is powerful. It's creative. It's nurturing. It's compassionate. Only we on the call can say, guys, hang on. Can we just take a minute? Can we take a breath? Shit, can we just take a breath? We can say that. This is when we're queens. This is when men get to be kings and to protect. And we get to honor you, respect you as that. Level six is awesome. It's a we. We're always winning. And level seven is when all of the energy is. This is when songwriters write songs in 20 minutes and they don't know where it came from. It's level seven. <laughs> this is when you're standing next to a body of water and you're crying. You're looking up at the stars and you're feeling really emotional because you're plugged into something bigger than you. You're not plugged into this physical shit. You're plugged into something bigger. I don't care what your religion is. It's just bigger. Level seven. When you know what it is and what it feels like, you do it on purpose. You bring it into your rituals on purpose. Level seven. I'll leave you with one last little video and I'm done. Oh, man. Walt Whitman. I could talk to you forever. Walt Whitman is one of my tattoos. All this is saying is that it's hard. That's all it's saying. It's hard, but we're here. So since we're here, let's decide that we want to we want to matter. Since we're here, because that's all your team wants. And I have it on my wrist because I wake up and I'm like, oh me, yes, it's hard. But am I going to leave this earth with everything I came here with? Yes, I want to leave it behind. I don't want to take it with me. We're not going to go through the hack. You can take a picture of this one too. And then I'm going to release you. This is just when it gets hard and you're in the moment. The first thing it says, take a breath. It's what we did at three. Get to three. Just get to three. Find any way that you need to get to three. Get to three. What do I need right now in this moment to be OK, even though Becky's like giving me shit? What do I need right this moment? <sighs> Since I said yes to this meeting and I'm here, am I OK right now? I'm OK. She's upset about something. If we're all winning or no one's winning, let me hear what she's saying. It's just a hack. When we talk about branding, branding is not you writing down what you want people to, to see you as and then handing it to them. Branding is the experience that people have of you. They will tell you what your brand is. You don't get to tell them. Ask three or four people, how do you experience me? They'll tell you. Maybe they won't tell you. Maybe it's bad. But ask, <laughs> your brand is the experience that people have of you. People are talking about you right now. What are they saying? Do they roll their eyes when they see your name? <laughs> Happens. Or are they saying, oh my god, I can't wait to see Liz. What are they saying? Then you can go. No.
That is the question. That is the question. I'll leave you with this. We have a lifetime to figure this stuff out, and it's not a right or wrong. None of it is. You're going to use all the energies. None of it is right or wrong. All we're doing is being aware and conscious, so we're always in choice. <coughs> when we're in our 20s, we're just doing everything that's coming in front of us, right? We're just trying. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We're just trying to figure things out. We come here with very unique things. In our 20s, we're not really sure. Bless you. In our 30s, we're going a little bit deeper into a specific area. We kind of know. We're kind of gathering. It's like, I've done this before. I kind of know this. I think I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at this. In our 40s, we're being known for that thing. If you're still trying to battle and be a warrior in your 40s, how much time are you spending in your 40s and not knowing? Because in your 40s, people are coming to you because they're, you're known for it. In your 50s, you're at half your life. You're in choice. I may do this, I may not do this. And in your 60s, everything is blessing. So don't rush where you should be or shouldn't be or I'm behind. In your 20s, you should be bopping around not knowing. In your 30s, do a lot of it. Do a lot of it. Practice. Because in your 40s, people will come for you. And they'll look for you. But only if you know. Only if you know. None of this is magic. When you're speaking, Susanna, bless her heart, she's like, oh, it really helped me in terms of pu public speaking. We're public speaking all the time, by the way. We're out in public, we're speaking. We're public speaking all the time. <laughs> It's not a big thing. <laughs> We're always speaking in public. <laughs> to present, don't present from two. Know your shit, put it away, and then take what you're about to do and share it. Don't offer it to be right or wrong. Just share. Just share. Be out of four. <laughs> be out of five. Changes the whole dynamic of being in front of a room. Because I had the privilege, the privilege of spending my morning with you guys. The privilege of doing that. Why would I be nervous about something like that? Nothing to be nervous about. If you're sharing, thanks for spending the morning.